Hey everybody, this is Name Your Game, a video game podcast brought to you by SharkName.com. Each episode, we have a new guest on so we can talk about their favorite games from the past and present. I'm Tim. And I'm Dane. And today we have Nick Wozniak, the pixel artist for Yacht Club Games. Uh, and of course, they made the very popular indie platformer, Shovel Knight. How are you doing today, Nick? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> How are you guys doing? We're doing well. Yes. Uh, you know, a, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. you know, uh, now that the weather here in the Seattle area has started to get crappy again after the summer, uh, you know, we're just sort of adjusting. Oh, I'm super jealous. You guys and like Seattle seems like a really nice place. And uh, California is just it's on fire. Like it's it's so hot here. <laughs> oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's true. I mean, I grew up uh, in Orange County in Southern California. Uh, yeah. And and all I've been hearing about from my friends and, and family members is that the drought has just been awful. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been weirdly hot. <laughs> I don't like it. I, <laughs> yeah. I, Seattle was really nice when we, we went to PAX Prime very recently. Mm -hmm. and uh, Seattle was great. It was like it's a cool city. It's small. Like L.A. is a giant monster and really oh, yeah. a great city to be in. Like Seattle is a really cool place. I, if uh, if I were to move Yacht Club anywhere, I would definitely want to move it to Seattle. <laughs> oh, that would That's be awesome. a good choice. Seattle yeah. is a fantastic place. <laughs> yeah, I love it up here. But uh, anyway, on to the topic of video games. Uh, we ask every guest on the show right off the bat, what is your favorite video game of all time? My favorite video game of all time. And so it, it, that's really hard because mm -hmm. I play video games in giant swaths of time where I'll play like one game for a long time. Sure, and sure. Like I'll play Minecraft for like 600 hours and just like <laughs> stick to it for like months at a time. Yeah. Or, you know, when I was younger, I would play Final Fantasy seven and I, and I played that all summer, one summer. And I like, I, you know, max the stats out cause you can, you can morph enemies in that game mm -hmm. into stat boosts that are permanent. And so I did that for everybody and everybody had like <laughs> you know, 255, everything. And that like took millions of hours and like the money count on my, on my save file got all like corrupted because like it was it was too, uh, too high. big to yeah, sure save <laughs> yeah. File. i've been uh, there too it's like i don't know the game i just put a lot of time into games so it's sure. hard to say one game but i would say the the games that i think about a lot when i'm thinking about other games or just like thinking about things in general like art and stuff uh, shadow of the colossus is really big up there for that because that game and eco are both really good at establishing scale and making sure that you feel like you're in a vast other worldly environment and i love love those games oh yeah you know i really have to play shadows of the colossus i've been wanting to for the longest time oh, and i haven't played one it one of our previous guests actually named it for his favorite game of all time as well so it's just like man i gotta get around to it yeah really good. I, and, and there's the ps3 remake where they it's like mm -hmm. the hd version of it it's really yeah cool. yeah definitely i i personally did play shadow of the colossus back when it first came out on playstation 2 i absolutely loved it my roommate and i just became so <laughs> obsessed with it you know we would we would yeah. get out of car college classes and 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 run home and and you know sit down and, and just play it and be glued to the television uh <laughs> And, and I did actually pick up the HD uh, remake on the PlayStation 3 and thought to myself, this is a perfect chance to, to revisit it and maybe get some other friends to crowd around and watch it so they can experience it too. And unfortunately, it just didn't pan out. I oh, mean, yeah. Mostly because it came out a little later, you know, in my adult life where I have more responsibilities as a lot of us tend to have. <laughs> You're not having and slumber parties every Saturday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I wish. Man. Oh, my gosh. Pillow forts and Shadow of the Colossus. That sounds amazing. <laughs> but what one feature I did really like about the remake, though, is that you could actually use a, uh, you can put it into 3D if you have a 3D television, uh, oh, which really? I have. And, uh, oh, really? and that was really cool. That <laughs> You're like one of more. 12 people in the world. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. I really, I did. I bought into it and, you know, I was burned. Earned, but the, the few <laughs> things that that still utilize it are, are pretty cool from time to time. So but in that game, it's cool because when you're even when you're riding the horse, you get little bits of dust and stuff that get kicked up from the ground. And that actually kind of like has that appearance of floating in front of the television. It's <laughs> oh, it's really cool. It's immersive. I like it a lot. Oh, but, I, haven't, uh, I haven't tried that. That's what I'm, I'm really excited about the Oculus Rift for is oh, like yeah. all the 3D stuff that is just going to open like the world opens up. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you can you can do a virtual boy emulation now. <laughs> it's oh, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like watching movies that were in 3D. 3D like in the theaters and so now you can watch them like right in your face. Absolutely. Uh, that's yeah. that's sort of what I'm like hoping that Oculus Rift becomes. It's sort of like this weird extra thing that you can experience 3D things in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's this book that I read called Ready Player One. Are you familiar with it? No, not at all. 
the premise of the game is that or the book rather is that you know it's a futuristic world where everyone plays this giant mmo which is kind of like a it's almost like a virtual reality internet so uh-huh. it's like the whole world's connected through this virtual reality and you know it's a full body immersion thing like that and there's yeah. this the type of game they play where they actually experience movies in the role of their you know certain character and basically like how accurately they say the lines of the character they get points or whatever so yeah. it's like <laughs> silly and <laughs> and with the Oculus Rift, it's like, that's actually something that could be possible. In yep. the, you yeah, know. potentially. I guess yeah, that'd they, be really could, bizarre. they yeah. could program the your view into what that would the first be the person toughest part is. of the main yeah, character Yeah, was. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really bizarre. And then maybe like that that recording of you playing the movie. Like you're, you're you know, Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. And so like yeah. then people watch your recording. That would be oh. so weird. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> or you could live stream it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. While, you're, while you're playing yeah, exactly. slash watching. Yeah. yeah. Mission Impossible, the theatrical play. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a but it's it's an interesting movie. Uh, or book. I keep ca- I called it a game. And <laughs> now you called it a movie. I don't know. Uh, that's I because d- the the <laughs> we're talking about all three things kind of all at the same time. It's true. It's it's a, it's a book about a movie game. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, so so Shadow of the Colossus that was your choice. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of your favorite games of all time, and and yeah, I knew exactly what you mean. Like from an artistic standpoint, even it's it's a it's a beautiful game. Yeah, it's, they, they, it's you're always just blown away by the vistas and just like w- walking around. I remember playing and and getting lost and not having such a bad time. <laughs> like it was. Really oh nice yeah, lost in that no, t- totally. And and I I mean I even remember um, friends of mine who tried to get into the game but couldn't uh, because you know they would say well there's just uh, the boss fights themselves are pretty cool but i can't believe there aren't dungeons i can't believe there oh, are yeah, no enemies point. from boss to boss and i'm just like i think that you're you're kind of uh, uh missing the point because really it's about the atmosphere it's it's so it's atmospheric you know just kind of holding up the sword and directing the the light reflecting from the sun yeah yeah you know? and you, it's uh, like the 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 visual effects are really nice the music and the sound design is really great yeah uh, like you're always just like blown away like that's the feeling that i kept kept getting in that game is just like being impressed or blown away like like having that that sense of awe when i played it and that's mm-hmm. like very rare to find in a game and that same thing happened to me playing I, uh, eco as well you know seeing that big castle at the beginning and then like exploring all the way around and and mm-hmm. finding areas just kind of like chill in and that was really really exciting really cool and it's like so i don't know that's a little bizarre because it's not the kind of games that i like making or the kind of games that <laughs> i respect nowadays but sure, it's like sure. it's, a, it's a really good balance that i that i don't know has been balanced anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess there are certain games, I'd say maybe the Souls series, Dark Souls and Demon Souls, mm-hmm. kind of are, are a bit similar to that in, in the sense that the environments and uh, some of the boss fights do a really good job just being so full of of, of atmosphere and, and yeah. wonder. But, of course, those are very different games uh, <laughs> gameplay-wise. Yeah. No, but I see what you're saying. There's there's definitely the sense of, like, you're you're approaching something that sort of live in lives in this domain and is the master of it and and mm-hmm. you like the gameplay is centered around this like this character right and he, he's just a little guy and yeah. so <laughs> but you feel like that little guy like how am i gonna uh, approach this mm-hmm. giant you know bat or the giant snake monster that's flying in the sky yeah. and the thing is it's not like you're in, in an rpg there's a separation where it's like well i'll just hit the attack button and it eventually do damage <laughs> like yeah. you have to actually think about like how you're going to approach this thing as this little guy, like there's a collision box and there's like, there's physics and like there's, there's things happening in the real world that you have to actually learn to interact with. And so absolutely, um, I yeah. definitely get that sense from dark souls and demon souls as well, where you're like this guy that's armored and you have to like physically avoid the tail that's, that's mm-hmm. swimming around and, or the fireballs that are coming down. And it's like, it's more intense in, in dark souls, but it's the same sense of like, you have a character with collision in a fighting a big giant thing that's made of, of attack collision. And it's all exciting and scary. Yeah. The tension <laughs> that it evokes is, is incredible. It really, it's sort of like a David and Goliath kind of feeling. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think I was at your place, your old place when you were playing the HD remake once. Oh, my and, place. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you were playing it, but someone was, and I watched a couple bosses. So I, I Shadow least, Colossus. Yeah. Shadow. Oh, the Colossus, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you at least got to experience that. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I definitely have an idea of like the atmosphere of the game and everything. For me, though, like I can't really get emerged and Im- emerged immersed, immersed <laughs> unless I'm the one with the controller in my hand. And it's, yeah, sure. I, I, that's kind of 
No, that, that, that makes total sense. Like the, the agency is, is what's required for you to have, you know, a fun time and, and exciting and be immersed into the game. Sure. And it's not that I don't enjoy watching friends play games because because, you know, there are some games that are just a lot of fun to just sit around and everyone's watching and everything. But to really get immersed in a game that because it sounds like Shadows of the Colossus is really about the atmosphere and the immersion in the world. And yeah, for that particular type of game, it would be better. I, I would experience it best by being the one playing. Oh, yeah. I think that's true yeah. about everyone is that it would be best but yeah it's well not everyone difference in, some people in, in, really love watching other the people difference play in games joy i would get would be maximized anyway uh, yeah <laughs> well i would i would say too it's kind of like the game journey i would definitely recommend that anybody experience that game for the first time actually playing it journey or shadow of colossus i'd say that about both games it's like you really should be the one playing to get that experience but when yeah, it comes to it's that personal interaction with the world, right? Like that doesn't work if you're just watching it because there's no interaction. That's just like yeah, a story being sure. told to you. It's like vicarious yeah. interaction. Sort of like it's like watching a movie almost, yeah. uh, except you can give your friend shit like if they, <laughs> if they, if yeah, they screw up. Exactly. <laughs> um, but in terms of, of watching versus playing, the one genre that I actually prefer to watch is is horror mm. because I just get so anxious. I get so anxious when I'm playing and I know that I'm going to move the character around a corner and and something horrible and scary is going to happen. And I kind of have to take breaks because it's almost exhausting. But if someone else is playing, I could just watch forever and, and just kind of like get scared vicariously through them. But it's not too much for me. I don't know. Are you a fan <laughs> of horror games? No, I definitely am. Um, and it's you're right. It is a very different experience. And it's a lot like it's it's toned down a little bit when you're watching somebody else go through it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that's definitely an advantage. I, I remember watching the PT demo before playing it. There you go. And watching it was like was understandable and exciting and actually kind of funny mm-hmm. but like playing it was like i jumped out of my skin and i was like freaked out and it was it was not <laughs> <laughs> it was it was very different <laughs> awesome i'm like the only guy who doesn't like horror games or movies or movies it's just not your just not, not, just not your thing i just don't like it that's okay or horror like music <laughs> anyway. whatever that is <laughs> It's the same kind of thing. It's the same kind of environment, like in, engrossing into the environment kind of thing where I I don't like a game that just relies on jump scares because like oh, those yeah. are I mean, those can be fun and exciting and, and you know, what, it, it's scary. If they're not but, predictable. Well, yeah. yeah. But like what's really exciting and really cool and scary is when it's more cerebral or where it's like it's more just in your face or just scary because it's there. Like the, the example, there's, there's examples of this in the PT demo actually, yeah. where you, they walk down that one loop where the lady is just standing there and she's just standing in, in where the, in the foyer where you turn the corner, you see her and she's not doing anything. She's just standing there. And as you approach, the lights go out and there's no choice but to walk to where she was. Oh. Like you, you're approaching this doom and like, it's all on you because there's no, there's no, like you're, you're waiting for the jump scare, but it never happens. And it's just like this, this really scary buildup and you just get really tense and I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it because it's <laughs> so like, uh, I don't know, like you have to, you have to like, as a player, you have to approach that scary. Like you have to approach that doom. Oh yeah. You have to take it over. And like, that is really, I, I think one of the better parts of that game where you you actually have like you you're in control of that scariness and that's i think actually that's that's the best part of that demo um the jump scares are scary and like there's a lot of things that, that jump out at you but that was like oh man i have to go and do this <laughs> you know i have to make this happen <laughs> and that was just the scariest thing ever <laughs> that sounds awesome yeah unfortunately uh, i haven't had the opportunity to check it out yet just because i don't have access to a playstation 4 uh, oh, yeah. But I, I can't yeah. wait to, to figure that out. out. That's a really cool demo to play. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard. Yeah, just uh, man, Guillermo del Toro working with Hideo Kojima. That's 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 nuts. I, I don't know what they're doing, really... though, because those guys are like they're both like movie directors. <laughs> I know that like I love like love Metal Gear Solid, but like yeah. he's, he's into movies and Guillermo del Toro is a he's a director. Like what part of the game are they making? So it seems a little bizarre, but I like where it's going. I really like yeah. the cinematic experience that it was you know that was a demo so hopefully oh, yeah. it goes in that direction where it's not i don't know <laughs> like it's better than it's pre than its predecessors <laughs> yeah I, I would agree i mean the silent hill series is a little notorious uh for having gone in a sort of a poor direction i guess so so hopefully it, it kind of yeah. takes it back to where it should be yeah i agree <laughs> yeah so was What's yeah. a more recent game that you've really enjoyed? Maybe yeah. By recent, I mean Maybe past in, five years. Yeah, last five years take. or so. Something and you can't say Shovel Knight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, That's okay. I don't like Shovel 
You don't like Shovel Knight? <laughs> no, I do. I don't. I, I don't like Shovel Knight because I've worked there for so long. It's like I, oh, yeah. I, I am know, I know very familiar with Shovel Knight, so I'm just <laughs> like I, I'm tired of it. But you're out of that honeymoon I, I phase, can... and you're just kind of like <laughs> making it work. I'm like way past the honeymoon. Phase. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, it was something no, that may have affected you as strongly as as a game like Shadow of the Colossus, which you know you have fond memories of, but more recent, you know, something that you really really loved. Well, like I mentioned before, I play, I, you know, Minecraft was really big for me and mm-hmm. I played that a lot and we played that together as a company and then um, as some friends later. And so, like, I played that a lot. But I think a game that really stands out for me and I wonder how people will react to this. Um, Bulletstorm was like one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs> oh, wow. And not for its Bulletstorm story is terrible. Whatever. Sure. But the 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 mixture of mobility with with uh gameplay like they, that is such a gameplay rich experience that it's it's like it's a shame that they're not making a second one <laughs> it, it, correct me if i'm it's wrong is like, that the one where you like lasso people pull them up to you and then like kick yes. them in the yeah, in the chest the, yeah, yeah so it's like what you do is you basically like you have a leash that you shoot out of your left hand and it, it pulls guys towards you and then it slows down so you can shoot them on the way there right um or you can slide at them with on your knees and like it pops them up and they go into slow motion so like yeah. everything that you're doing has mobility and there's like there's meaningful interactions with all the characters and so when like when you think about i was just talking about this earlier today actually like when you think about like cool events that happened in the game you're thinking about the things that you did like not the things that like happened during the gameplay yeah. experience like it's not it's not like the drop ship came down and dropped all the aliens and i had to fight the guys like what's happening is like oh i i, I popped a guy in the air shot him in the crotch a bunch of times kicked him into a wall and then like he exploded and and knocked three of his <laughs> other dudes around and they all exploded and then i threw a grenade and they like wow we thought the whole thing in under like 10 seconds and it was awesome <laughs> and i had this great experience like that's a core gameplay experience because oh, that's like you doing it you know yeah. I think that's what Bulletstorm offered in spades was like this this world where you're constantly getting new weapons and all the weapons are really interesting too. Like they're not it's not just the pistol, shotgun, uh, machine gun, and then like stronger pistol or whatever. Like sure, it's yeah. it's actually like interesting weapons. There's a there's a weapon that uh, you get later in the game called the the drill or the something. It's probably like the penetrator or something like totally sexually uh, <laughs> suggestive. It hits a guy and drills into him, and then you can kind of control it and like drill into other guys. And there's like this really oh. satisfying crunch when it hits them. There's a there's a like a lasso gun that, that that shoots out a thing that like if you hit a guy in the right spot it'll decapitate him and then explode <sighs> later or you can just oh hit a guy God. around the waist and wraps a, a grenade around him like it's all these really interesting weapons that are fun and interesting to play with as not just like binary choices like I, I'm going to use a shotgun until I run out of bullets and then I'm going to use a pistol. That's lame. Like what it yeah. does is like use these cool weapons because you're trying to like get as much points as possible. And that's also what it does. Like you get score for interesting and unique ways to kill people. And like it's sure. it's like it's violent. And, and the story is like and they're extremely sexually suggestive and the, the, whatever. Like <laughs> if the story didn't exist, that doesn't matter. The gameplay is like really where it's at. And uh, yeah, that game is like really, really fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely played a demo of that game a while back. Was that a that was a previous gen game, right? Like 360 PS3? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I did. I, I download a demo from Xbox Live Arcade and play it. And when it gives you those points too, uh, doesn't it also? Does it have like names for the moves that you do? So like, if you shoot them in the crotch, <laughs> doesn't it give you like a yeah. suggestive, stupid, like kind of like Tony Hawk <laughs> tricks? Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, Tony Hawk is exactly what it is. It's a, it's like if Tony Hawk. <laughs> was a shooter with <laughs> you know, a bunch of dick jokes. That's basically what Bullet Bullet Storm is, but That's with like hilarious. way better mobility. Like it's I don't know. Um, it actually sounds it's like a lot like, of fun. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. Did you guys play Vanquish at all? It's a uh, just a little bit. Sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, you that one like you can kind of run and then like slide on your knees and and take yeah, guys out while you're sliding. If I remember yeah, correctly, yeah, similar to that, and that like there's mobility built into the character. Yeah, um, and I think uh, Bulletstorm is a better version of that, but sure. uh, but maybe it's, it's a different version. Like Platinum's, like you know, like a Platinum game is all about the action and a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of things to do, and you kind of like find yourself the flow of that. But Bulletstorm was like I thought a much better designed and kind of like the the encounters were all interesting and. You know, there's a there's a big boss that you fight, and it's like it's really cool. There's like a sure. there's a kind of there's some dumb sequences where you like you're just shooting a big boss, but like the 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 main core of the game is really really great. Awesome. Uh, who developed it? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I think that's People Can Fly, which is the uh, the offshoot of Epic Games. Oh, okay. Right. See, I was gonna say I, yeah, the, I the character designs, if if I remember correctly, kind of reminded me of uh, Gears of War a little bit. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, okay. it's it's definitely that. Like the. 
it, you could definitely like it, they're almost thinner. Like there's they're like smaller versions of the Gears sure. of War guys, you know? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, like every character in pretty much every other video game other than Gears of War is a little thinner than the <laughs> Gears of War guys. <laughs> but they're still like really bulky. They're like I don't know. Like if if Gears of War is, is a ten and in the bulk scale, and you know I don't I don't know normal people are, are a one. Yeah. Storms like sort of like a seven. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Um, so I mean, we might as well uh, uh, talk a little bit about Shovel Knight, considering sure. uh, uh, you know that's. Uh, that's... I guess. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Shovel. Knight. Well, no, I, I want to talk about Shovel Knight. I've been kind of holding back because I absolutely just completely loved it. I mean, I, I devoured it and and loved every second of it. And I know a lot of other people have. You know, uh, that's not a unique experience of mine by any means. But um, really, just growing up with with. Mega Man and 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 DuckTales and and Zelda 2, Castlevania, just all of that being present there, except the game being a lot more polished than than <laughs> you know its predecessors. It, it just it was not such <laughs> such an amazing experience. Yeah, not slowing down. Yeah, it just it was so much fun. Uh, and and uh, so I thought that I would have you go into some of the features that are going to be uh, patched into the game. Yeah, just so our, our listeners can can learn about what's changing. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for <laughs> saying such nice things about Shovel Knight. Oh, of course. <laughs> and and of... I mean, uh, sorry to to overly flatter you or whatever, oh. but the the pixel art, uh, especially, it's it's so amazing. <laughs> like, it's really really great. Uh, well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, a lot of the character designs, enemy designs, really enjoyed it. Yeah, the whole the whole team really like worked well to make sure all those aspects happened and mm-hmm. and went well. So. I'm really happy with uh, the result as a, a, as the with the game as a result of the crew. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I mean, Shovel Knight. It's it, as you mentioned, it's growing over the next year. Like it's uh, it came out in late June, um, mm-hmm. but we're still working on it. Like there's still a bunch of uh, content updates that we're doing because we were a Kickstarter back last year. We had a bunch of stretch goals, and those stretch goals are like meaningful content updates that we're we're um, going to be working on right now. Actually, I'm actually starting work on anim- on animating Plague Knight for his playable campaign because there's there's three bosses that you're going to be able to play as. There's Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, and King Knight, and they're each going to have their nice. own story, their own gameplay styles. Like it's not just a skin of Shovel Knight. Like their Plague Knight right now doesn't have a down thrust, so it's like it's a totally different game. Huh. That's <laughs> yeah, awesome. no kidding. I use down yeah, thrust like ninety percent of the time. Yes, that's the main. Like that was the main inspiration for. Shovel Knight. It was, you know, can we make a game about the down thrust in Zelda 2? And so to like start with like not really having a down thrust as a core mechanic is like really bizarre, but like it's it's kind of working out so far. And so uh, we're developing just like a completely different play style for him. The animations are coming along. I just did a, a bunch of like a, the mobility set for him. He's actually kind of smaller and cuter uh, so <laughs> that he can fit in the same uh, hitbox as, as Shovel Knight. So sure. that's happening. And then we'll be doing uh, King Knight and Spectre Knight after that. And like like, like Blake Knight's different. He, they're going to be different too. Um, maybe drastically different. Um, we've joked about well, I, I don't. I don't want to spoil too much. So, about <laughs> <laughs> some stuff, but like that would be make the game completely different, like different genres. Um, but wow, uh, huh. so that's sort of like you know down the line. Uh, but we're t- so the three playable boss nights, and those were voted on by our Kickstarter backers. Um, okay, I, so I was going to ask because because in my opinion, King Knight, come on, you can do better than that. How about <laughs> Propeller Knight? <laughs> Propeller Knight was King fourth Knight's place. just so he's just so I don't know bland. Really, I, I don't know. I thought King Knight was. <laughs> hilarious because he's a king but he's a knight it was just it was like an oxymoron almost yeah but and, yeah. and that's fine but like his his boss battle and well, compared, he was meant to be like the first boss like I, the I understand i'm not saying that <laughs> i'm saying that there are more interesting bosses i'm not saying that he's bad because he wasn't interesting yeah i liked <laughs> I it i think people liked him because of his attitude because he's got like the swagger walk and he's like yeah really he does have that swag jerk oh yeah I mean, he's, exactly he's, he's so he's, he's, he's jerk, really so he's like he's gaudy though like yeah yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. so yeah he was actually it was the first place was Spectre Knight, and then second was Plague Knight, and then third place was King Knight, and then fourth was was Propeller Knight. So so Propeller Knight didn't make the cut, but by not by much. So sorry. I guess I'm not <laughs> playing it then. <laughs> Just joking, obviously. There's also okay, so that's that's one of the stretch goals. There's also challenge mode, and we have talked about challenge mode being like a subset of levels that focus on specific challenges. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that maybe it's it's a relic challenge, sort of like the 
the Knuckler's Quarry or the Phase Forest. Like it's the, oh, yeah. something like that, maybe. Or maybe it's something totally different. We haven't actually like figured out what that's going to be. Um, but it was initially pitched as like a bunch of challenge levels. Sure. But like we could also do something totally different <laughs> and, and that would be totally fine. We have yeah. like, like that's also on the table. Like we don't want to be bored with what we're making. And so we're always like talking about stuff that's silly and fun to do. But yeah, yeah you can really see that in happy. Shovel Knight. <laughs> there's things <laughs> yeah. in there that you just you could tell they were included just because just because they're fun or just because they're or silly. Dumb. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, like just the the tropel, uh, the the trout mm-hmm. tra- apple tropel, and the uh, <laughs> what's his name, the frog, the pun frog or whatever. The which one? There's two. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that was both, the best I guess. part. We had one, and then we we're like, we can make a second one just by recoloring them, and then we did it. <laughs> 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 but isn't the second one just really down in the dumps? He's he's got he's the one that you talk to or yeah, you give the one that you tell jokes to. to yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. That's coder, and then he yeah. just <laughs> shakes his head. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite version or my favorite example of a of a joke that's in there just for us is when you use a charge attack on the hoop girl's hoop. Mm-hmm. And you hit it off screen and she gets really sad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I <laughs> love like, that. You can just be a jerk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I absolutely loved that. That was a, definitely one of my favorite, very subtle things, subtle additions to the game. <laughs> definitely. Because that was like the first thing I did when I went back to the town with the charge attack. Not necessarily on yeah. purpose, but I just did so much just like jumping around and swinging my shovel for no reason. Just because, sure. you know, like ADD. Oh, I have to walk over here. So I better press 100 buttons while I'm on my way there. <laughs> and, uh, and and yeah, definitely. uh, uh hit that hit that hoop and, and had a good laugh <laughs> yeah she gets so sad like she just stops and stares <laughs> yeah <laughs> and just isn't it just a little a little like a ellipsis like a dot 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 when you talk to her after that yeah exactly yeah, yeah that's great and and i liked when you shoot yourself out of the cannon you occasionally just crash into the ground yeah yeah if you're wearing any armor but the ornate plate you'll just land on the ground there you go. Um, if you're wearing the ornate plate, you'll do a really fancy land and then it plays a sound and sparkles come out. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. See, I must not have realized that that was specifically what caused that. But, yeah, but that makes exactly. a lot of sense because I know like villagers will occasionally whistle at you more often when you're wearing the, the ornate plate as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it also it doesn't it cause a couple of other changes like a, a king knight makes a comment at you or something you do like that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He says yeah. something about it. And at the, at the end, the spoiler free as much as possible, but yeah, he, you should wear the, the gold armor at the end of the game. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry if I'm spoiling yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. You get sparkles <laughs> and a flip. Yeah. That's, so that's cool yeah. enough. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, I think I also heard, um, that you will be able to change the gender of shovel Knight and the gender of shield. Oh, Knight. right. It's actually going to be gender swaps. So the gender swap mode is going to be the way we're, we're thinking about it is you'll be able to change the gender of, of most of the characters, the main characters at least. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be able to choose like, oh, I want, I want, you know, female King Knight and, and male Mole Knight and, and just like go down a big list and you just choose the gender that they are. And then, um, or like you hit the randomize button and it makes everybody like whatever, whatever. Um, oh, that's and so awesome. that'll be just like a thing that we do. <laughs> that's so, <laughs> so cool. That, because yeah, that's just like an like excuse a small... for us to do art. Yeah, totally. And it's such a small change, you know, like it's it's minor. It doesn't change the gameplay. It doesn't change the story, but it's still something interesting and it's something that people can do. And and for a lot of people, too, especially people who feel uh, underrepresented, um, yep. you know, it just gives them the the chance to, you know, to make it how they want it to be. And that's really exactly. cool. Yeah. So the, the story won't change. You're not you're not going to be playing as Shield Knight. You're going to be playing as Shovel Knight, just the female right. version. So like sure. you can craft that story to be um, however you want it to be. And so <laughs> yeah. that's, def- that's, that's something that we're going to be enjoying doing. We're actually starting on some of that right now, too, actually. Some some sketches for, you know, the opposite for the, the male version of the Enchantress are being done and they look really rad. Oh, <laughs> nice. Awesome. That kind of makes me think of Adventure Time, if you're familiar with or if you're a fan of Adventure yeah, Time, yeah. how yeah, they occasionally they, do the gender band episodes. Yeah. 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 And that's that's yeah. really fun. Yeah. We're definitely looking forward to that. So are there any other upcoming uh, publicly announced changes that we haven't discussed yet? Yeah, the big one. So the biggest one is uh, our battle mode so it's going to be a four player couch multiplayer competitive oh man right each other in the face <laughs> uh, battle mode so it's going to be able to play as our last stretch goal was being able to play as all the boss knights and so the whole roster oh. of all the characters are going to be able to fight and you're going to be punching each other or doing basically the, the mobility of each character against mm-hmm. each other and it's going to be all kinds of craziness and fun that sounds so, awesome. that's, that's really big, fascinating so is yeah it, that, that won't be online that won't be like you're not gonna be able to play with anybody online or 
uh, the 3ds won't have it because the 3ds all of, all of its interactions are netcode sure but it'll be on any, any it'll be on any platform that's out that has like that is a console or like it'll be on steam but you can just play it like on your tv or whatever plug plug four controllers into your pc that kind of thing you're so. not gonna have local area uh no the, the local stuff it that's even though it's like local, local it's local. still netcode so it's like right. um like for the 3ds or if if we do a vita the same kind of thing like it's it's still netcode and so that 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 blows the resources or the uh the scope of that out of the water so yeah we're doing what we can with what we <laughs> what we have in the time no we i have, understand so. yeah. yeah it's it's definitely understandable but I was going to say that we should totally do it uh, on Shark Tank. We have a, a basically a four player uh, let's play show yeah, group. Let's play group. Let's play that's show. Great. And I was like, oh, that'd be so cool. We could do all four. But it's tough because usually we play the four of us are, are almost always. Uh, uh, yeah. Not distance from one place. another. So we'd have to <laughs> oh, we'd have right, to get four right. people in the same place. But I mean, it could be worth it. It's possible. Yeah. We can do, we can do it. Do it for a convention, right? <laughs> like oh, you yeah. Guys all go to Pix Prime. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> there you go. Going back to, we were talking about Oculus Rift earlier, and this is kind of a throwback mm-hmm. here, but uh, that was like my biggest regret about PAX this year is that I didn't get to play any of the Oculus games. Yeah, and, and didn't we both want to do uh. that last year's <laughs> PAX too? And we were yeah. like, this year we're finally going to play yeah, Oculus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's even this indie, this indie with that used Oculus that was like a, it was like a space shooter game with Oculus. Oh, and they had their yeah. own separate area that's... where like there wasn't a line like at the actual Oculus. There was booth? a line. Oh, there was. Oh, okay. There was a line and that's why I didn't play it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they were like. <laughs> is that the one that has the robots i forget the name of it though Ooh, i don't know about i don't i don't remember if it had robots there was one that was a kickstarter recently that was an oculus game that has robots and it looks really cool it looks kind of like and maybe nobody knows what this game is but omega boost like it looks like you're kind of like your your omega mechs boost. that are shooting each other it, one thing that's cool about that is that jake kaufman's doing uh music for that game oh. so that's that's a really cool thing that's happening <laughs> that's awesome and especially jake kaufman sure music that was there. jake kaufman music yeah. in an oculus game like geez talk about like a good soundtrack to be immersed to. That's <laughs> yeah, cool. Definitely. I was going to say when you mentioned Omega Boost, uh, I've never played it and would never have heard of it if it wasn't mentioned in the PlayStation song by Eiffel 65. I don't know if you're familiar <laughs> with that song. No, what? Eiffel? What? <laughs> yeah. The, the, you know, the, 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 the group known for the blue song has a song right. called the PlayStation song. And, and Omega Boost was one of the games because they have like a sort of a selection of lyrics where they're name dropping games that are popular games on the PlayStation. And, and the, yeah, they bring up Omega Boost. And I would always think when I hear that stupid song, like, what is that game? Why would they bring up a game that if I had never heard of it at the time? I was, That sounds uh, like yeah. Sony totally sponsored that. <laughs> <laughs> that is very possible. Well, that's Maybe. pop music for you. Yeah, it's it's very possible. <laughs> yeah. uh, now I kind of want to look up that song like on Wikipedia <laughs> later on because <laughs> no, I'm curious. No, just skip the song, play the game. Omega Boost Omega is Boost. rad. Omega yeah, so Boost it's a good is game. like, a, yeah, it's awesome. It's like a space Panzer Dragoon or to like, it's awesome. Oh, if it's like Panzer Dragoon, I'm already sold. Yeah, it's super rad. It's that's super rad and rad and awesome. And you should play it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are a lot of positive words. Yeah, uh, that's exciting. Cool. Is it more rad than it is great, though? That's my question. I I don't know. What, I, what was the order that I gave? I think it was rad, great, great and awesome. Like, I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's the correct order. <laughs> okay. Correct order. okay, just making sure. So, oh, and, 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 and I guess back to the Oculus for the third time. <laughs> I'm very excited for the, the portable, uh, the Samsung. Uh, a case for the the samsung galaxy note 4 sure like uh, the- because because the note 4 i i use a, a galaxy note 2 right now and the note 4 comes out next month and i already had planned on, on upgrading to it and and then they announced within the last couple of months that they're going to come out with like the portable version of the oculus which works exclusively with the samsung galaxy note 4 and it's powered off of the phone's battery and screen so you just plug Wait, it in what are, you, what are you talking about i've not heard of this what is this oh okay sorry um uh yeah the uh, oculus Oculus and Samsung work together and they're making um, yeah. like a portable Oculus VR. That's like it's like the Samsung Oculus. I, I don't recall. I think so it wait, has an official name, but it's, is it's it like it's the same headset. Just like yeah. plug into your phone. Just you just slide That's your phone thing. into the into the eye slot thing. Yeah, there's and a then, port it goes into. Yeah, and it plugs right in and then the phone acts as the screen, except it's going to be higher resolution because the phone itself is, um, I think it's 1440p. Um, okay. So it, it and, and it's going to work with a lot of what uh, Oculus already works with. A lot of the Oculus <laughs> game developers had to um, port their, their stuff over to the Android platform, but other than that, uh, it's supposed to work really well. I think I, it was a Polygon article that I read recently where they actually tried it and said that it was surprisingly awesome. So oh, I'm awesome. like super I can, stoked. I can, be, I can look like an idiot in, in public now too. <laughs> yep, yep, totally. You can just put it on like on an airplane or, or wherever and, and yeah, just look 
so uh, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You can't see yourself, but that's all that matters. Yeah. The, the best part would be if it's like it only supports games that are voice voice activated. Oh no. So you're just as much of a nuisance in public as possible. Oh, God. <laughs> that would if it, if they did that with a Microsoft phone, that's what would happen. <laughs> Oculus. Hey Oculus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> But anyway, before you got work as an artist for a gaming company, like how old were you? Were you right out of college or something or how did that happen? Actually, during college, I was doing for like I went to college for 3D animation. I studied, um, you know, Maya and I did some flash animation and I studied, you know, traditional animation, pen and paper or pencil and paper, I guess. And then while in college, I really enjoyed 3D animation. So I started doing it uh, freelancing. Like I started doing stuff for people that were doing visuals at parties. And I did um, just like random toy things. Like it was, it was all really bizarre and really unprofessional. And they paid me my, like what I deserve, which is really low. Um, but <laughs> it was a lot of fun to like learn how to be a professional. And then at, oh, yeah, after that, you just I was, get paid to do it. Uh, uh, exactly. However much you're still you're, you're also <laughs> exactly. learning while doing it. So that's a lot more than uh, some people are able to, you know, accomplish. So that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm really I'm really thankful for the people that like hired me <laughs> at that time. Yeah. Um, but I would do all my work at, at a coffee shop that was mm-hmm. close to where I live. And that a coffee shop happened to be underneath a game development studio. studio. They, they was uh, way forward was on top of it. And okay. so. They would come in and, and like I'd talk to some of them every now and then. And so they saw me working all the time. And, and like one of the guys was like, like he's more on the hiring end was like, hey, so you do flash animation, right? And so I said, yeah. And so like I, I started actually at WayForward doing flash animation, wow. which never went anywhere. But like that was that's how I started. Sure. And uh, from there, you know, I kind of just like grew in the company. I, I was because I was like. I learned a lot of t- stuff. I was able to, to kind of like find my way through through the company in that way and um, eventually found pixel art and like really enjoyed that. And, you know, I also did some technical stuff. So like I, I learned, you know, Lua scripting for limited stuff use, that was used in um, Smurfs 2, the movie game. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was great. So um, when you so, started yeah. doing animation, you didn't do it with the intention of getting into the game industry or that just kind of... No, actually... So it was I, just I was, it was it was being so close to way forward that got you into the game industry. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I I like I always played games and I and I I loved games and then I realized like oh I could I could do this animation thing that I was thinking about doing for TV studios which just sounded terrible to me. And yeah. I, I, I could do this for a game studio and I was like oh oh I totally want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I more. I like, oh yeah, game design is really fun and so I started doing more game design stuff and I was actually like I designed some stuff uh, for the the Thor video game that I worked on and that nice. was a lot of fun and game design and game animation have been like a really focus ever since uh the, like the middle of my my tenure at, at way forward sure awesome oh man I, I really love stories like that too uh that involve you know you i just happened to be in the right place at the right time and they saw me yeah. working on animation and they were like hey why don't you do this for us you know like as opposed to like oh i applied and i did really good in the interview sure <laughs> <laughs> you know like it's just so much more interesting and i, I like hearing that because that's sort of it's just a little bit more of like the follow your dreams kind of thing like well yeah but those stories are almost harder because it's like people are like how do i get in the industry yeah that's be true. at the right place yeah. at the right time you yeah, know, I, I, mean? know. Like, I don't really have a good advice for that like you can't do what i did you know <laughs> no yeah exactly well i mean you could always stalk your favorite game company and then just find out where the, <laughs> the devs happen to get their coffee and i, I no, think when you that. breathe heavily it, it turns them off though um, <laughs> I think um, what uh, what helped me the most, though, that is applicable was the reason why I kept my job and, and stayed there for as long as I did and, and then found the Yacht Club. And like because of that was because I was able to adapt and and work efficiently and stay organized. And that's mm-hmm. something that like being a professional is like really hard to find, especially for an artist. Like artists yeah. are notoriously <laughs> flaky and uh, impossible to get, to get a hold of. And like being against the curve on that one was like totally really helpful. <laughs> well, that's and that's I mean, like in a, in a way that's actually really simple, really obvious advice, which is to say, you know, um, work hard. Well, no, I, yeah, kind of <laughs> yeah. if you even boil it down that low. But even just to say like, well, I mean, look at 
what a lot of artists don't do and just try to fill those holes, you know? Yeah. Uh, in any way that you can, standing out is the best way to get noticed. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's true. Like you can have all the talent in the world and, and if you're not organized whatsoever, you know, you're probably still going to struggle. Um, and so yeah, that's and really cool that you managed to work with you. Like yeah, you have to totally. work with the team. It's a, it's a, it's a, like, it's a communal, like social thing. And so you can't yeah. just be like on your own, doing your own thing. You have to actually work with them. And so you have to be able to work in a way that somebody else can take over your, over your work. If you need to like move on to something else, like mm-hmm. that's really important. You need to be, um, good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's, a, there's a lot of awareness that goes into it outside of just, Hey, this is my art. This is my craft. I'm going to focus completely on this. You really do have to set aside your mental resources, so to speak. And, and, you know, take other things into account as much as you can while still, of course, owning your yeah. craft. You know, I was going to say anybody who's like really good at the craft, like you're saying, anybody who's really talented, but is unable to work in a team they're like, you can still work with them. You just hire them as a, as a freelancer, or like as right. a, as a one-stop shop. Like they just, they just do one thing and then you, you pay, 200 bucks and then <laughs> them for a long time for but sure. if you want a job like in the industry yeah uh, you got to be uh more on top of your game so so there you go you, you mentioned a moment ago that the advice you had previously given or the story you previously told was was not exactly advice but now you've you've definitely given some solid advice if anyone's listening who does want to get into doing art for games but i think those are some good pointers yeah uh, so. yeah for sure uh so i guess you know we're kind of getting close yeah. to the to the yeah, end of the show yeah we don't want to we don't want to keep you around too long so the way we close out every <laughs> yeah, yeah no. it's no problem <laughs> the way we close out every episode is we ask the guest a question and this question the previous guest came up with and then after you answer this question we task you with coming up with a question to ask the next guest it can be anything okay. it doesn't have to be video game related necessarily sometimes it is sometimes it isn't um what did uh, so our, our previous guest was uh, andy shots andy shots of, from um, pocket watch games pocket they watch did. games yeah okay. they did monaco oh, yeah. so yeah what was his question his question was other than video games what is something you're very passionate about and why should our listeners be passionate about it as well yeah so oh, like video games. yep if there's a, a hobby that you have or just that you just love so well, much that, you know, and, and you, I really, really enjoy music um, okay. and I really enjoy finding music that's not that's not mainstream, like finding mm-hmm. that, like new, unique sounds. And yeah, like in, the, in the least sometimes. hipster way possible that you could. Yeah, you try and express I, that. I, like, I know exactly what you mean. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say that I'm a hipster without trying to be a hipster. But <laughs> like, it's a lot of music that's out there. It's really great. And um, mm-hmm. everybody should love it. <laughs> oh, I, I just I listened completely to actually, agree. I, w- I listened to like this, this uh, a bunch of music last night that was all from the 70s and it was all like really great and everybody should listen to it. And it's awesome. <laughs> I was listening like it was like Bill Withers and like oh, I listened Bill to some Dolly Parton and it was like all really interesting. Um, sure. And so, yeah, like, I don't know, like being aware of other art and expressions besides just games is really important. I think if you're making art or if you're looking to be inspired, I think music is really good for that. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know, like. That's really hard to say. <laughs> That's like my one hobby. <laughs> oh, and it doesn't have to be your one hobby, just another one. Something other you're games. passionate about. Isn't yeah, it? totally. I mean, yeah, do you a, have, do you have like a 500 foot Lego structure, you know, at home or, or oh, I, I, 500 I feet? Legos, That's actually. well, I have too many Legos in my garage and I sit there and, and I play with them every now and then. No so such yeah, thing Legos too are many. Up there. Yeah. <laughs> I, the, I just yeah. can't, they're too expensive these days, man. The, I always look yeah. and I'm like, oh man, a foot tall R2D2 count me in and then it's like 180 bucks well maybe not <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like yeah that's, that's the story of lego um yeah <laughs> yeah but, i have a lot of Legos. i i have a i have my daughter and like i think everybody should have kids like Aww. that sounds weird but like i have a daughter and like she's made my life so much better so everybody should have kids that's awesome that's, that's all right a, i'm gonna go have say, i'm yeah. gonna go have a kid right now actually um <laughs> I'm just uh, yeah you know music music is great because um another thing about music is for me anyway learning to play an instrument is a good way to be able to uh, kind of condition yourself to be able to learn anything because learning mm. instruments is doing drills. You know what I mean? I played the guitar for, well, I played for 10 years or whatever. I don't really play anymore, but, uh, you know, when you learn to play the guitar, it's not just, you're not just picking up the guitar and playing a song. You're, you you know, you have to do drills and you have to, you know, hours and hours of, you know, I played for yeah. five hours a day at one point in my life and three out of those five hours was drills and the other two was playing songs. And that's how oh, yeah, I became that's good. It, it's discipline. Yeah, exactly. It, it teaches you how to just accept that 
if I do these drills, I can play these cool, super cool songs. You know what I mean? So it's worth it because the payoff is being able to impress people by playing crazy cool train note for note or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I think you could say that really. Yeah. About uh, any sort of uh, creative uh, skill that takes yeah, any, any craft is like you, you have to do it. Yeah, sure. Right? Definitely. Like you have to like when you do it, then you're you're learning it and making yourself better at it. Like when you're copying the masters, like that's that's a really good way to like for pixel art. That's what I always say to people. It's like, hey, like, where did you learn pixel art? And it's like, well, you just like copy people until you're good enough to do it on your own. Yeah. Um, and there's a really good, great resource for that online called pixeljoint.com. dot com. Oh, and uh, they that's like where everybody who's a, who's a pixel artist who's serious about it. They post their stuff there and it's really, nice. really, really. So it's stuff. like the pixel version so, of like DeviantArt. Uh, yes, it's exactly what that is. So it's nice. It's it's really great and you can see some really cool stuff and yeah like mm -hmm. just like you're saying like you're doing you're doing drills like it's the same thing when you're doing art when you're learning animation you start with the basics you start with like you know bouncing a ball on paper or doing the the really famous drill that you do when you're learning animation is doing the flower the flower sack animation and a flower sack animation is just like getting a flower sack to a moat <laughs> it's nice. the idea is that it's like it's a nothing object that suddenly has character sure. and so and volume and so it's like that kind of stuff is really it's it's universal Universal. You just like you spend time and that time becomes a thing that, that like is a skill. And so the only thing you, you it kind of opens your eyes to learn that the only separation between you and the masters that you would like you would venerate is just like <clears throat> devotion just to the craft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hours of time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> um, OK, so so before we let you go, um, could we task you with just quickly coming up with a question for the next person? And it can be about anything, yes. really. If it is a game designer or someone who worked on a game, mm -hmm. if there's anything in the game that they worked on that's super secret that they like that no one's found yet, because there's always ah, something that's, that's a good there. question. There's always like a secret. I There's a secret that I know about that nobody else knows about in Shovel Knight. And it's not like a big secret, but it's there and it's <laughs> there for me. So like if there's an artist that worked on the game that did like actual assets, did like did they sneak a little message in the background or was it like. They, you know, they spelled out the 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 name of their favorite band on you know, <laughs> in the foreground art, like stuff like sure, that, yeah. like or like secret areas or something like that. Like there's there's always a secret that I've tried to put into the games that I work on. And I don't know, like I think other people do that, too. But I hope so. <laughs> well, yeah, what we always awesome do question. with our guests is we say, what's your answer to that question? Oh, what's my answer to that question? Yeah. Well, there's. There's one thing my my daughter's name is in the game somewhere and I won't say where exactly, but it's not the, besides the credits. Well, that's sure. awesome. But there's also, <laughs> yeah, there's also what what was the other secret that um, oh, I, I thought of like this question came up before and I thought of an answer and it was like it was kind of interesting, but and I I forgot it. <laughs> Shoot, hold on, <laughs> Morgan, help. Um, is there the yacht club? Logo? Yeah, that's in the game, but that's like everybody knows about that. This really? I didn't know about that. <laughs> the yacht, the yacht Club, yeah, the yacht club logo is actually in the game. Um, you can find it in in King and King Knight stage in Pridemore. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, I, I found, found that. that. Yeah. yeah, everybody knows about that. Damn it! <laughs> uh... Well, yeah, one of the things that I guess is like not obvious is that Polar Knight is semi based on me. Like that's he's the reason why his his laugh. Uh, sounds like water torture if you read his character bio that's that was a reference to me because my laugh is pretty distinctive and when i don't think about it it gets really loud and so um <laughs> I, I was told previously that my laugh was super loud and sounded like chinese water torture by a, oh a my God. previous <laughs> boss of mine and uh that was super lame of of that boss to say oh totally <laughs> That's yeah. offensive. So, but also, yeah. So torture. that's, <laughs> yeah. so that's, uh, that's, that's my, uh, that's a reason why Polar Knight's like that. Also, that's why Polar, like Polar Knight has a mole on his cheek and that's kind of because I do too. Oh, okay. Um, nice. And that was, that's that really was cool. sort of a mix up because I, I intended that to be uh, the nasolabial fold. It's the fold that goes from your nose down to the outside corner of your lips. Like that's oh, supposed right. to be like, yeah. When, when you're grumpy and like that's the like the line that goes there to emphasize that. Totally. And so I put that there, but it was interpreted as a mole. And so that's why Polar Knight has a mole. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. Awesome. I don't yeah. know. I, I guess that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thanks for sharing those with us. That's that's a fascinating, especially, you know, as fans of the game. I, I love learning about stuff like that. So cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for for coming up with an awesome question and answering it. And of course, for for being on the show. It was really a blast to talk to you. Yeah, of course. Any, anytime. <laughs> awesome. 
Anyway, uh, where oh. can people find your work? <laughs> yeah, right, your right, personal right, work as wanna, well as professional. If you follow me on Twitter, you can see that I, I do pixel streams, actually. So you can watch me streaming, animating stuff. So like I, just before this, I was animating Plague Night and people were watching it on Twitch. So post for that on Twitter at Norkwaz, N-O-R-K-W-O-Z. And if you just want to follow the Twitter, uh, the Twitch account, it's on uh, twitch.tv slash Yacht Club Games. If you wanted to follow Yacht Club, you can. It's uh, at Yacht Club Games on Twitter. And yeah, we have a Facebook, you know, facebook.com slash Yacht Club Games. Yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I don't do a lot of like like most of the art that I do is actually for professional stuff. So I don't actually do a lot of like side stuff. But okay. every now and then if I if I do, I'll I'll maybe I'll stream it. <laughs> sure. But, well, awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for uh, for being on the show again. Again, this has been Tim. And this is Dane. And thanks for listening to Name Your Game. We work on several other projects at SharkTank.com. That's Shark with a C. We're a nonprofit, volunteer-driven gaming and geek culture site based in Seattle, Washington. We do local convention coverage, let's plays, tabletop strategy, game reviews, among other things. Like and subscribe if you want to support us and our work. You can leave feedback through our comments on YouTube or on our site or email us at NYG for Name Your Game at SharkTank.com. So uh, next up, but our next guest is Gen Z, the lead artist for Supergiant Games, who did Bastion and Transistor. Very talented artist. Really excited for that. So, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening, everybody, and have a nice day. Yeah. Thanks again, Nick, for coming on. Yeah, of course. Anytime. You get, that was a, a lot of fun. <laughs>